What's up, everyone? It's your boy, Scott. Welcome to the Scott Report. And today, I'm bringing you an anime review of the Ancient Mox's Bride, Episode 5. Another week, another fantastic episode of the series. And it is on a roll, ladies and gentlemen. This series is so good that I'm surprised I haven't picked up the manga. For both this and Inuyashiki, usually when I get this deep into a series or something that I like this much, I usually read the manga, but I said to myself this season, maybe going forward, that I'm not gonna spoil myself. I'm just gonna remain an anime only until it's over. Just fight it so I can just have that anticipation every week. Even though I'm one of those people that spoilers don't really bother me. I just, you know, tell commenters and things just to be sensitive of people who don't because some people really hate them. Me, it makes me more excited to actually see it, but you know, I want to enthrall into it and have something to look forward to even more because I'm just loving what this series is bringing to the table. And this week was no exception, but I didn't expect this week to go as deep as it did. I mean, it should be expected with this series. We're getting just five straight weeks of just meanings and deepness and things that it brings to the table, but I didn't expect to have so many emotions and didn't expect to see so much darkness either. I mean, we knew it got dark, especially with last episode, but to actually see Mina explode like that, I was like, oh my God, what the hell? Jesus, I mean, it really did catch me off guard because the tone completely changed. As she say this episode, while she's trying to do this cleanse, she actually goes into the memory, she comes like an after image and we get to see the entire story, what happened with Matthew, Mina, the cats, bringing everything to full circle this episode and we get to see the full story because you knew it was still something that was left unsaid. And you know, Matthew basically got drove to the point of insanity. It was just, he was really fragile after what was going on with his wife. And basically what happened to him is he got manipulated. He got played, he got manipulated by this sorcerer because he was so desperate to save his wife. And this sorcerer used that to his advantage to do this experiment. It's almost like what um, Renfred is saying about Chise and Elias. It's kind of like he was saying the same thing Elias is trying to do is what um, this sorcerer did with Matthew and his wife by just experimenting and using them because a little bit of it is his fault, I'm meaning Matthew, but at the same time, you, you kind of understand where he comes from. This is his wife, he loved her, he wanted to do anything to get her back. And this sorcerer just played him like a fiddle in order to achieve this experiment that he was trying to do to actually find a way to condense souls. And that's what he was using the cats and the lives for. But one part that kind of got me a little bit confused, maybe I have to see it again. He told Matthew that, you know what, your wife can't be saved. She got a sickness that's not going to get better. But then he turns around and tells him, you know what, there is something that we might be able to try, you know, if you kill all these cats. We might be able to do something. I might be able to make some type of medicine for her as we see Chise saw, not as what Chise, yeah, Chise and Mina, because Chise saw the whole thing going on, but Mina actually saw what her husband was up to. He had this shed with tens of cats, hundreds of cats, and it was still something that he hadn't even killed yet, and he was just slaughtering them one by one by one and their blood is everywhere, and he was actually trying to make some type of potion. And he said to Mina that this potion would make you feel better again. And she was forced to drink this potion. The sorcerer was there watching this whole thing, grabbed her, poured her mouth open, and made him put it in. And at this point, Matthew is so desperate to save her. He's so deranged to save her and do anything. He just got so engulfed in trying to keep her alive that he went along with this. And when she took it, she just exploded. It was just bow, just goo was just everywhere. And this is how the goo that, or the black ooze or whatever it was that was filling the village that the cats were trying to stop came to be because she basically turned to that. She turned to nothing. And this sorcerer, he was just like, oh, well, that didn't work. Okay, bye. So that was messed up. And I wonder if we're gonna see this sorcerer again because you know, it might have been a lot of sorcerers out there at this time, but I just feel like we're going to see this character again. That's why they made it pivotal to show it in the background besides just for the backstory. Because it's, um, the sorcerer did get a little bit of screen time to show how devious and how evil he was. And after that happened, you know, Matthew just went off the deep end. He just saw his wife just explode and turn to some goo right before his eyes. He was just gone at that point. He was like, you know what? Maybe I need to do more. So he continued to kill cats. It's like, dude, he went off the deep end. And we got a big re revelation here because we found out that the cat by the name of Tim was actually Mina and Matthew's cat. And this cat was actually the king. That cat was the king 
that started the uprising against this guy and um, took the first strike to kill him. And you know, all the rest of the cats after that consumed him. And then they became the souls. As we find out that this goo was not only Mina's soul that is at unrest, but it was also the souls of the cats as well. And that kept growing and growing and growing. It was going to consume. And that is ultimately what needed to be cleansed. And that was the situation that Chise was faced with in this episode on top of, you know, Renfred. And I can't remember the other person that was with him. Um, it kind of circles back to this where basically what he's saying about Elias has just been assumptions. It's like, this is just what he thinks of this guy. He's like, you know, he's manipulating you. He has a tracker on you. He's just using you for the experiment. That's why I'm saying it's kind of coming back to what happened with Matthew and Mina and his sorcerer saying that, you know, he's just using you for an experiment. And this is something that I've said ever since episode one. She said didn't believe him because, or not necessarily believe him. It's just kind of like I... It was, I can't really explain it. She was saying it in a way that as nice as this man has been to me, this is the nicest that everyone, anyone in my life has ever treated me. So just off of that alone, I'm going to put my trust in him. I do not believe you. And she actually took an attack at this guy. So props to Chise for stepping up as well. You know, just letting that, you can't exactly say love yet, but letting that adoration, that admiration that she has for Elias to teach her, take her, her under his wing, take care of her, but letting that shine through and show the true content of his character, regardless of his past, because I still think it might be something dark there in Elias's past. I'm gonna not let him off the hook yet until we get his backstory, but it was really nice to see that. It was nice to see that she didn't believe this sorcerer's story, and it was just so sad and heartbreaking at the same time to see this story of what happened with Matthew and Mina and the cats and everything is now this ooze has to go and it has to be cleansed immediately. We also got more information on that cliffhanger that we were left on last week with the fate of a slave baggy, which is to die because a slave baggy absorbs and puts out so much magical energy that eventually it will just overtake the person's body and destroy it. And that is the fate that Chise is dealing with and she's still trying to wrap her head around that, but it was just such a big moment for her to put her trust into Elias right now and say, you know what, this is my fate, but you know what, maybe, just maybe, it's something that can be done about it, or at least that's what I got out of the episode, because it was just a lot of acceptance that went on in this episode with Molly as well, because, you know, the cat, the cat king, Molly, her story comes full circle with us now getting all the holes of the story that went on or what wasn't said, but, Something that was left a little bit unclear was the cleansing process because we know that Mina wanted Chise to cleanse her soul as well as Matthew's soul and the cats because this goo was forming because they couldn't pass over. They couldn't rest in peace because they were in civil unrest. She wants to cleanse them out completely. But what Chise did, she was actually able to pull a Peyton Manning. She pulled an audible and her along with the fairy were able to come up with a way that they could cleanse this soul in a way that it wouldn't be so malicious to cleanse it so they'll be happier. You know, they made everything around them appear to be a little bit better. And this is why I kind of don't understand. Maybe I need to watch it again. But it seems as if she still was able to do the cleansing process. And Mina, he actually got to see Matthew again. And he was actually back to himself. He was back to his whole self of who he was before he got manipulated and went off the deep end and now that the two are together they can love each other the way they did both going away happy into a happy place but molly stepped in and said you know what i will give my ninth life as well in order to make this process go through because she was happy with her life you know like even though she loved that child that human child very much she was like she'll be okay she'll live a better life you know the rest of the cats will be there for her but it's unclear if she still went through with giving her life because once she said that she would do that, you know, that's when she say, and the fairy kind of jumped in and said, you know what, this is another way that this can be done. And they were able to find a way for these two spirits and the rest of the spirits to pass over into the afterlife a little bit happier than we would have seen. So I don't know if we're going to get to this next week, but it's left unclear to me if Molly actually gave her life or did they, you know, step in so she wouldn't have to. And also, you know, with Renfred and the other sorcerer, you know, they just kind of went into the background as the entirety of the episode was the backstory. So I'm wondering what went on with them as well. And also, you know, we did get to see um, Elias show up and he was like, you know what? This is my wife to be. This is my apprentice. I'm always going to have her side. You can try and manipulate her all you want. 
but what we feel for each other is real. And it was a little bit creepy when he licked her neck and um, <laughs> kind of healed her because she took a cut to the neck when they held, had, had her held hostage. But, you know, it's still some things left unsaid. And it's not necessarily a flaw to the episode. It's just a little bit confusing as far as, like, the process of what went on with Molly and where did the um, two sorcerers go. Maybe we'll get to that next week. And yet another beautiful display of music and imagery during the cleansing process once again. And, oh, my God, this episode and this series overall, just it just leaves me feeling warm inside. And I, I just absolutely love it. I love this series, guys. And, again, I'm trying to fight reading the manga because I honestly think the anime may be better in this sense because you get to see this magical world and you get to see all the beauty of it in animated form. I think this is probably truly the best form for it. Let me know, you guys. I mean, I've been hearing that it's doing a really good job adapting the manga series, but what do you prefer? Do you like the manga better or do you like the anime better? Are we going to see this sorcerer again? Do you think he's going to show up? Where did these two sorcerers scurry off to after coming in and trying to cause a rift between Chisei and Elias and overall. Uh, yeah, that scumbag sorcerer that we got in the episode causing a slaughter of these cats and causing a man to go into insanity trying to save his wife. Just a very powerful episode and absolutely loved it. I would give it another 10 out of 10, guys. I gotta be honest. This is how good this series is. I'm gonna go ahead and get the body here. So guys, let me know what you thought of this episode in the comments below. And if you liked the video, go ahead and drop a like. And if you wanna hear more, go ahead and hit that subscribe button as there's not a shortage of content for you to indulge on on this channel. And as I always say, you guys can be anywhere on YouTube right now. Just chose to listen to me. Really appreciate that, so thanks for stopping by. On that note, it's your boy Scott signing out. See you soon.